Hello there! Welcome to chapter 4 of my Fire Emblem 6 Low Tone Camp playthrough. The first thing to note here is that we have to wait for Narshan to move on to discuss into Advanced RNG, as it would otherwise change the final enemy phase of the chapter. This map is pretty high on the difficulty spectrum casually, as you are fighting a swarm of cavaliers and nomads, all very tanky, and thanks to their high mobility, able to kill the more squishy units in your army. So this is also the first instance where ambush reinforcements are going to get player as a deadly right guard is spawning ne near the boss in turn 6. Then again, this is an LTC, and we're going to blaze through the map, missing out on the recruitment of right guard and Clary. Now this house Shana is very close to the front line here, despite the lack of preps menu. The styling position would actually be Ellen's if she was still alive, and Shana would be at the very back of the team as a result. Killing off Ellen on the previous chapter allowed Shana to be there, and will allow to save a turn on this chapter as well as give some EXP to Shana. On turn 1, we position Dict on the front line, as he's one of our most durable units and is able to handle all 4 captains in the map without dying on the first enemy phase. This, however, isn't the only reason we brought Dict here. Marcus is just a few tiles away to finish this map in 3 turns. So I'm sorry, Dix fan, but the man will be the next victim of this LTC, as he's going to rescue Marcus and then die, allowing Marcus to move again. Wade is then going to give Roy to Marcus, who will equip him with Rapier and drop him in just in range of the gate he needs to see the next turn. Lou will take care of the Nomad while Lance, Lord and Shanna will move forward, burning 401 errands in the process for the enemy phase. The next enemy phase is actually quite interesting. Lord is going to tank 3 cavaliers just fine, but what we want to look at is the next 2 cavaliers that will attack Roy and Shanna. If we didn't burn the RNG with the cutscene at the start, both cavaliers would crush and die on Roy's rapier instead of splitting priority, weirdly enough. That is because they prioritize damage on Roy, as it would take more damage, and just suicide on him in the process, losing some precious XP to Shanna, since we managed an Iron Lens crit kill on one of them. Fun fact, keeping the javelin equipped would mean both cavaliers will go on Shanna instead of splitting on both as well, which is not the desired outcome either. This last player phase will require us to clear the way to the boss and is going to be pretty heavy on Manip. First, we need Wade to hit a 51% hit with his Iron Axe against a Sword Dev. Then, we'll kill it with Lu, who will get a perfect level up but luck. Funnily enough, this too unreliable outcome requires a really low amount of Manip. Next up is a 2% crit by Lot to one shot the Lance Cavalier, which required 182 random number in burn. After that, Lance will get a nice javelin crit, which is a 69% displayed hit, and a 3% chance crit. This will not kill it yet, but that means we get a free kill on Shanna, who will level up for it. Since it's Shanna, we still want a perfect level up. Problem is it's super far away, 2474 random numbers away, and the multiplied by 900% speed here. In real time, it took about 2 minutes of good cursor wriggling to hit such a far away set of numbers. Compared to Pin Crush, on Chapter 2, I got one less max HP on Shanna, as the numbers were again so far away, but I couldn't afford to skip it on this chapter, because that would change some strats later. Finally, Marcus will get a Silver Lens crit on the boss to one-shot it, allowing Roy to capture the gate in 3 turns. We'll see you next time for Chapter 5.